is a programmer and web designer. Surely you'll be familiar with the hover event. This is an event that creates a transformation with an element when hovered with the purpose of emphasizing and highlighting. This type of effect exists in every website, whether small or large projects, because of its greatness and simplicity in creating it. Because normally to create an effect with the hover event, we only need CSS. For example, here I have images side by side. By default, these images are blurred and discolored. Only when hovered will the hovered object return to its original state. This is extremely simple because we just need to listen to the hover event and change the properties of the hovered object. But if all images are in their best state now, when I hover on an image, the rest of the images will be blurred. Do you notice the difference? In this case, the object that we will change the CSS value is not the object that is hovering, but the remaining objects. So with the hover syntax in normal CSS, this problem will no longer be solved. Some of you will choose JavaScript to calculate and process this exercise. But no, I will help you solve it simply and concisely with only CSS. With the help of two selectors, not, and hover. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you, everyone. Here I have a list class which contains many items. Each item will have a separate image. My task is to use only CSS so that when the user hovers on an image, the remaining images will be blurred. First, let's come to an indirect approach, which of course only uses CSS. Let's analyze it together. When the user hovers on an image, this image is in the item class, and the item class is a child of the list class. That means, when the user hovers on an item element, the list class is also hovered on. Understanding this problem, I use a little trick as follows. When the user hovers on the list class, it means that an item is hovered. I change the filter for all items without caring which item it is. At this point, no matter which item the user hovers over, the entire image will change to gray and blur. But if that's the case, it's still not what we wanted. Yes, now everything can actually be solved easily. We just need to create an exception item. When the list class is hovered, the hovered item is an exception. This item will cancel all the original blur filter values so that it returns to its original state. So method one works, no JavaScript, and six lines of CSS code needed. The reason I call it an indirect approach is because from the beginning to the end, we don't go looking for the item that is not hovered. But instead we change the effect of the entire item, then make an exception for the hovered item. If anyone has this logic, this is a very good logic, signaling that you have a good programming development mindset. Now let's go to option two. In contrast to the indirect approach, we will have the direct approach. If the indirect approach will require at least two steps to solve this problem, then with the direct approach, we only need one step. When the list class is hovered, I will point to the child items inside. With not, all events caught after will be negated in reverse. That is if I use not with hover. The meaning of this sentence is to point to the items that are not hovered. And those items will have to add the filter attribute to change the effect. Now when hovering, only the items that are not hovered will have their filter changed. Isn't that great? The not selector in CSS has the power to negate everything at once, and with hover, this exercise is also possible. This is just one of the small powers that the not selector can do. Without spending much time with JavaScript, all our problems will be solved simply with not. And that's all the content that I want to share with everyone in this video. I hope it will be useful to you. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos about programming and web design. And please leave a comment if you have any questions or want to share with me suggestions for topics for the next videos. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.